If you're dealing with estrogen dominance, elevated estrogen levels, even fibroids in your breast tissue or your uterine lining, maybe you have a history of endometriosis and even infertility, today I'm gonna to share with you several ways for you to naturally reduce elevated estrogen. This is particularly aimed at my female viewers. If you have a female in your life who needs to manage and reduce and treat elevated estrogen, today's video is going to be extremely impactful. Recently, I told all of you, my 440,000 YouTube subscribers, about what topics you wanted to hear in our monthly live show. And pretty close to number one was this topic, elevated estrogen and natural treatments to reduce estrogen dominance and the side effects of elevated imbalanced estrogen. So that's what we're gonna to tackle today. And particularly, estrogen can cause all sorts of negative side effects in the body, but it is a really critical and essential hormone that we always want to have at an optimal level. So it's not uncommon for many of you watching to have estrogen dominance and still suboptimal lower levels of estrogen. I just wanna put that out there. We will talk about that in other videos, but just know this is specifically aimed at helping to reduce super high elevated estrogen and calm and regulate and modulate the estrogen that is being produced by your body in a natural way. So number one, one of the most impactful estrogen metabolizers and compounds that helps your body get rid of excess estrogen is a cruciferous derived compound called DIM. I've talked a lot about DIM here on my channel and always with my patients, but DIM is something that you're going to find has indoles, which is the compound that we really, really appreciate in its estrogen metabolism. Plant-based, you're gonna find DIM is derived from cruciferous veggies like broccoli and cauliflower and even kale. DIM is something you're gonna to want to take in a capsule form. It's, com it's in a compounded form. It is a very powerful way at helping your body and your liver metabolize estrogen. Number two, counter to what I know many of you might think, flax seeds and lignans, specifically the compounds in flax seeds, help to reduce estrogen. I've gotten a lot of viewers saying, I don't like flax seeds because they elevate estrogen. That's a misnomer, that's a myth, that's a non-truth, and factually and scientifically not founded. Flax seeds are anti-estrogenic. That's what we want to tap into here in that whole omega balancing. One of the things that omegas do, all different types of fatty acids help break up and break down the long bonded chains of estrogen. Estrogen is a very heavily bonded, 13 or 14 different bonds. If you remember chemistry and bonds and the kind of the conglomeration of assorted organic chemistry, compounds have bonds. Estrogen is dense in its bonding and omegas help to break up those sequences, helping your body and the DIM previously break up metabolizing, metabolize and reduce estrogen levels. On a daily basis, you wanna look at taking two tablespoons of flax seed a day, and I recommend whole flax seeds. You can grind them up that day. I prefer and recommend and eat myself flaxseed pudding. It's like chia seed pudding, but just flaxseed. It gets congealed. It's great to let sit overnight. It also has really good fiber content, and you can add a whole bunch of other good things like maca and some of these other compounds I'm recommending today. Highly beneficial. Our third estrogen reducing herb here on this list is called chase tree berry. You might be familiar with it. It's a common known name as Vitex. And if you live in certain parts of the South, you might actually have Vitex growing in your backyard. Like we have three Vitex trees. Vitex is a powerful pituitary gland regulator. It helps to balance and regulate the signaling and communication of your pituitary and other reproductive glands in the communication and calling up and production of estrogen. This is really important because chase tree is an ancient herbal we've been using and seen recommended for hundreds of years, centuries, 
tons and tons of highly beneficial power and potency that Chase Tree can deliver to your body to help balance and reduce estrogen. This herbal is particularly beneficial, especially if your pituitary gland is overwhelmed from stress or other inflammatory factors in your body. I love Chase Tree for all women and Vitex, especially with women 35 and older. It's very powerful. And similarly, our number fourth herbal here is an herbal called red clover. Red clover has isoflavanones and it's really, really beneficial for reducing estrogen levels. This particular herbal, we see a lot of estrogen dominant symptoms like hot flashes, mood swings, PMS, that kind of fluctuation where estrogen really spikes. Red clover is great for bringing balance to the body. Now, number five and six are therapies I recommend. Number five, exercise that is fat burning in its focus, like muscle building, weight training, and even exercises that are HIT, the high intensity impact cardio. These muscle building, fat burning exercises are really key for reducing the amount of excess estrogen being stored by your body and your fat cells. So this is less about weight management and metabolic process and more so minimizing the quantity of fat cells in your body that are holding and harboring excess estrogen. I love these types of exercises at minimum three times a week. I would not do them daily, ladies. So make sure you focus on three to four days, no more, no less. And honestly, one of the most important components behind excesses in estrogen is stress hormone management, particularly cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that your adrenal glands produce and can just create all sorts of havoc inside your body, particularly when it comes to reproductive hormones. One of the challenges with excesses of stress and cortisol being elevated or imbalanced in the body throughout the day women will experience a significant reduction in progesterone. And I've talked a lot about stress and hormones and I have both a playlist for stress and a playlist about hormones. And this really is the intersection where stress, hormone, cortisol, and the body's responding to stress and we're producing cortisol. The body steals, it leeches, it uses and basically swipes progesterone to manufacture cortisol. So what happens is for the female body, estrogen is no longer in check. And there's a ratio between estrogen and progesterone. It's a three to one ratio. That's the perfect ratio where we see a, 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 the most minimal amount of symptoms of hormonal imbalance. Even when women are too low or too high, if we have the three to one, we will see less symptoms. And what happens with stress and a lack of stress management and lack of reducing stress and balancing cortisol, we will see super elevated estrogen. Estrogen just becomes unchecked and it can elevate because of cortisol. Cortisol slows down and bogs down the liver's capacity to metabolize estrogen. A lot of things that are counter to what you want to have happen are occurring because of stress and the hormone we know as stress. And stress management techniques are really critical when we're trying to drive down the estrogen dominance or elevated estrogen levels you might be experiencing. So things like deep breathing, yoga, kundalini yoga, and even meditation are absolutely some of the best ways to reduce cortisol. Now, if you're curious about your cortisol levels, let's get those tested. I specialize in assessing cortisol test levels. I run 40 to 50 tests a week and my patients, we analyze where the cortisol is and then we're able to fine tune the need or your body's utilization of progesterone so that we can stop the cortisol overwhelm and stop the leaching, the stealing of progesterone so we can start to see that balance. So if you wanna get your cortisol tested, it's as simple as ordering a test kit, it gets mailed to your home, you send off the results to the lab, the lab then turns around and gives you the results and we can review that. So it's super simple, you get more defined, identified values, you get to figure out where you're at and not guess. And I'm always, always communicating, let's test and not guess, especially with estrogen, that's elevated or unchecked. It's not always about having elevated, super high off the charts estrogen. It's more about that 
estrogen dominance, that ratio, the three to one ratio. Most of my patients are a, an eight to one, a 12 to one, sometimes a 30 or 40 to one ratio. And therein lies the problem and cortisol is a big factor. So question of the day, what symptoms do you experience that are most troubling and problematic for you that are common with elevated estrogen? What have you done thus far to balance it? And are you going to try any of these six assorted recommendations? And definitely consider checking out the description box for an assortment of supplement recommendations and the test kit and other playlists and videos you might find relevant. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll subscribe and I can't wait to see you on our next video.